Thanks for having me out. Uh, the Whosoever's Movement. Uh, we are a global movement that tour all over the world. Uh, we've seen close to uh, 200,000 students give their life to Christ over the last five years in the, in the public school system. Um, and uh, because in my testimony, um, I don't know if you've ever heard of I Am Second Films, but you can look them up. My name, Ryan Reese, I Am Second on YouTube. Um, in my story, when I give my life to Christ in a hotel room in Panama City, um, after nine days of cocaine, Xanax, and alcohol, I OD'd for the third time of my life. And um, I called out to God and I stole the Bible from a hotel room. They're called Gideon Bibles. And now, since I stole the Bible from the hotel room, I'm a poster child for them. They have me speak at their conferences and they send in Gideons wherever I go globally to bring the Bibles for free. So that's a good perk of stealing a Bible from a hotel room. So um, I'm going to just get into it because we have 44 minutes to get into the message. Um, my message today is called The All knowing, you know what, Do I have, I'm going to share a quick story really quick. We just, we just got back from, from Mexico, from Puerto Vallarta. We were down there on a tour and the government, because my dad's from Mexico City, so I got some, um, I got some clout with the Mexicans down there and they, they bring us into the government and they allow us to go into the public schools and bring the gospel. It's, it's built, Mexico's built on an atheist of government. So you can't talk about God, but God has opened the doors and given us the keys to Mexico to go in through the, the mayors are allowing us to come into Mexico and invade the public school systems and lead people to Christ. And Gideons are obviously showing up. Now, what's interesting, I'm going to go to the slide before this. It, it shows a big crowd. We showed up on, on um, LGBTQ plus, 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 plus month, the Pride Month in Puerto Vallarta. So the government officials that were ushering us were all, you know, LGBTQ gay guys and girls, and they were ushering us, and they were a little nervous about us at first, but we started having conversations with them, sharing with them, praying with them, and, and we ended up becoming good friends with them while they're allowing us to go give the gospel in the schools. Then they said, hey, we're doing Gay Pride Week in the main downtown of Puerto Vallarta. It's like the Hollywood strip of Puerto Vallarta. And we're having drag shows and you know, transgender shows and all these things going off. They said, hey, would you like to do an event in the middle of Gay Pride Week? I said, yeah, hook us up. So they gave us this arena right here. We, had to, we took an EDM DJ, electronic DJ with us on tour. So we set up, we had to get rent bigger sound system, which was super sketchy doing that down there anyway. But we went there, we set up, and the whole place filled. And it filled, and we ended up, I told people, if you want to give your life to Christ, come forward. Big old altar call. People came forward, gave their lives to Christ. Then, in the middle of me praying with people, I get a tap on my arm by one of our Vuzer ambassadors, and he goes, Ryan. He's like, get down there in the, in the crowd. He's like, there's a girl that's demon possessed. She's manifesting. So I run off that stage, jump off into the crowd. I go up and Calvary Chapel pastor uh, from Puerto Vallarta, him and his wife and a couple others are trying to hold this girl down. And she's doing the demon thing, ah, screaming and the whole thing. So I just, we laid our hands on her. Boom, we ended up casting the demon out of her. Turns out she was a witch. And she showed up to the event. She started manifesting. The demon came out. She got saved. Now she's plugged into Calvary Chapel, Puerto Vallarta. Arta, but we just saw radical things happen and it's so awesome that I, when I live, my, my mission is the Great Commission. This is what I do globally. We tour the public school systems all over the world. We just got back from the Philippines last week and uh, we must continue because the schools are the battlegrounds. So if you're connected to any Christian clubs, you're a teacher, you know anyone in the schools, please contact us. We want to come to your local school and I'm from California. We are invading schools in California, in Hollywood, in LA. So, so it, could, it could happen here very, very easy if we can get into schools in California. All right, so let's, let's get into it. If you have your Bible, get into uh, John chapter 13. This is an honor and a privilege to be here with you guys, by the way. This is so stinking cool. I love it. Thank you for having me. Okay, so John chapter 13, we're going to look at verses 18, 19, and 20 tonight. My message is called The All-Knowing God. 
But leading up to this moment, obviously Jesus has been on a three-year public ministry, Great Commission. Uh, from John chapter 12 to John chapter 13, the scene changes. Now Jesus is heading to the cross. In John chapter 13, it says basically an overview is Jesus knew he came from God and he was going back to God. The hour has come to go back to heaven. Not only that, he also was sitting there with the disciples at this last supper meal, breaking bread with them. And he ends up at the end, taking off his robe, girding his loins. And then he gets like a, a basin of water and he goes around and he starts washing the disciples' nasty feet. Now, if you've ever been to Jerusalem and you've ever looked at the shepherd's feet, have you ever seen those shepherd's feet there? See, I get like, I get the osculars from like feet, adult feet freak me out. Now, when you go look at shepherd's feet in Israel, they are horrible looking. I mean, bad. Just go Google like fungi and blisters and toes and all that stuff. <laughs> so this is basically, the Bible says that Jesus went from town to town and village to village. They weren't on horse and buggy. They weren't in cars. They weren't on donkeys. They were going by feet in sandals. On those roads, they were dirty roads, cobbled stone, mud. They're, you know, people were taking, you know, uh, um, goods from one city to another. You got, you know, you got animal feces on the road. I mean, you can imagine the disciples' feet. Here's Jesus, the Messiah, the Son of God, washing these nasty feet of the disciples. And he says, I, you guys have seen what I've done. And if you do what I have done, then God will bless you for doing it. So he's basically saying, hey, listen, guys, you know, there's no one's greater than anyone and no job is too dirty to do to serve each other in ministry. We are all equal and just get your hands dirty. Don't, don't, don't think you're better than anyone else and God will bless you for doing it. So this is the end of Jesus' three-year public ministry. All Jesus sees is the cross. He's heading to the cross. The cross, the cross, the cross. If you like to shoot, you put your target on that front sight. That's what Jesus has with the cross. He just sees the cross, the cross, the cross is the target from this point. He's here at this last supper meal with the disciples. He's teaching them. He's preparing them and getting them ready for their great commission after his death and his resurrection. Picking up in John chapter 13, verse Verse 18, and we're going to look at verse 19. Now, I read out of the New Living Translation. I studied out of the King James Version with Chuck. But I read out of the New Living Translation because I was in all the special ed classes growing up. I stink at reading, okay? So my translation might sound a little different to you guys. So now I'm going to read out of the red text. The red text is Jesus' words, in case you didn't know that. It says, Jesus said, I'm not saying these things to all of you. I know the ones I have chosen, but this fulfills the scripture that says the one who eats my food has turned against me. I tell you this beforehand so that when it happens, you will believe that I am the Messiah. So Jesus is telling the disciples that this prophecy of the Old Testament scripture is about to come to pass and be fulfilled. That's from Psalms 41.9. It says this, even my own familiar friend, the one I trusted completely, the one who shared my food has turned against me. He was speaking of Judas Iscariot. Well, the, the, the Bible's referring to Judas Iscariot when this was written. Jesus once again proven he is the Messiah by giving this prophetic word at the dinner table of something that has been prophesied hundreds of years ago that has not yet come to pass, but now is about to happen in the next few minutes in real time at this dinner table. And this event will make the disciples' faith grow stronger and confirm that he is the Messiah, like he said in John chapter 13, verse 19. He says, I tell you this beforehand so that when it happens, you will believe that I am the Messiah. Now we know that Satan, Lucifer, the dragon, the serpent of old, the destroyer, we know that he would love to seize this opportunity when he ends up possessing Judas Iscariot at the table and later on in this story, that he would love to cause a division and divide this little church ministry of Jesus. We got Jesus, which is the rabbi, the teacher, the anointed one, and then you have the disciples, right? So G Satan would love to use this opportunity to cause a, a church split, if you will, or a division. But Jesus is telling them, he's saying, I'm telling you guys ahead of time so that when this happens, you will believe that I am the Messiah. It won't break you guys apart and divide you, but yet your faith 
will grow stronger through this. And also remember that all signs and wonders always point back to the fact that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and that the word of God is real. So here's Jesus, the Messiah, talking about this Old Testament scripture is about to come to pass. He says, when this sign and wonder happens, this will prove that I am the son of God and that what was written about me in the Old Testament is true. It confirms always, everything always points back to Jesus Christ being the Son of God. This also proves that Jesus is eternal and he operates outside of time and space and he's the all-knowing God. You've probably heard in your church many times your pastors say omniscient, omniscient. Well, when you look up the word omniscient, it means all-knowing. So God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. He's a three-in-one, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the beginning, God. He was in the beginning. When was the beginning? I don't know, but whenever it was, God was. He has always been. God is in the past. He's in the present and he's in the future. But why is God being all-knowing important to us and how can this encourage us tonight? He's in the past. He knows our past. He knows everything that we've been through, whether it be good or bad. Whatever you've been through, he knows where you're coming from. He knows where you're at in this present moment, everything from your past that has led you to this moment in time. And he also knows the future plans that he has for you in the future to where he wants to take us. He knows everything that's going on in your body physically. He knows everything that's going on in your mind mentally. And he knows everything that's going on in you spiritually. So when we're praying for God's help and his direction and his will to be done in our life, like provision for our family, you know, I don't know, California, the gas was like $9 for a while and you can't even eat steak or sushi there anymore. And it's like that, that's just, the, you can't do that. You got to just eat vegetables. No, um, it's crazy there. But providing in these crazy times with inflation, when we're praying to maybe leave a job, maybe God has opened the door somewhere else. Maybe he wants to give you, you know, have you climb up the ladder in the business or maybe there is even a problem. Praying for husbands, Lord knows we need prayer. I need prayer. Okay, I got issues I'm trying to work out. We got to pray for our wives too, husbands. We know they're perfect, but we got to pray for them, okay? So pray for our husbands and our wife and our kids, our families. We all got the crazy uncle. Our future goals, plans, our problems. How about our future problems? God is in the future. So don't wait till the future to pray. Pray now for your future. Or mental health crisis that's going on or dealing with death or suicide. I just had to deal with my family. One of my friends committed suicide recently. But this mental health thing, let's talk about this just for one minute. Why is there this big mental health thing going on now? Ever since screen time came up, we know that average is 9 to 11 hours a day of screen time people watch. And now we know that um, it's affecting people's lives. We're seeing the statistics. Let me simplify mental health for you, okay? I'm not talking about people that are chemically off, that need, you know, stuff to make them operate correctly. But all of a sudden, the masses, everyone's going crazy. Everyone's having mental health. Let me simplify this. Have you ever heard that saying, garbage in, garbage out? Well, Jesus says the eye is a light to the body. Whatever you are watching, that you are putting into your mind, Take for an example, which is a huge, I was hearing Greg Laurie talk about the statistics with pornography in the church. It's like 78% of men watch pornography and then 76% of females. Like it's like changed over the time with screen time. So if you're watching that garbage, garbage in, garbage out. If you're watching supernatural films like Harry Potter or these other dark films of, you know, this dark stuff that's going in, guess what? Darkness in darkness out. If you're putting drugs in, you know, you're going to, you know, the effects of drugs, whatever you're putting in, the eye is a light to the body. No wonder why people are going crazy. They're dumping so much garbage into their mind daily, just dumping it in, dumping it in. And then they're like, I just feel crazy. Well, no, duh. (laughs) No, duh. It's very, it's very, very simple. The mental health crisis, garbage in, garbage out. The eye is a light to the body. But the most important thing why we're praying, though, 
is praying for our relationship with God and being sensitive to the work of the Holy Spirit in our life daily. He will show you what paths, with an S, to take as you read the Bible and pray and obey. Read, pray, and obey. Who cares if you read and pray? Religious people do that. All my Catholic friends do that. But they're bad boys. As you know. Not all Catholics, but you know what I'm saying. Religious people. Read, pray, and obey. Not just on Sunday, but every day, 24-7. We have to read, pray, and obey. You know, there's that verse in Proverbs that says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not half your heart, not a quarter of your heart. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Don't, don't lean on your own little pea brain. Because Chuck Smith said that the planet Earth is a speck in the galaxy and we're a speck on a speck. So trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In every, all your ways, everything you touch, submit to him and he will show you what paths to take. Okay? And there's people here now that have crooked paths, crooked paths in marriages, crooked paths in pornography, perfect, perfect, uh, crooked paths in business, crooked paths in relationships. If you trust the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, lean out on your own understanding, commit all your ways to him, he will show you what paths to take. But how does that come? Through reading, praying, and obeying. When you read the Bible, the Bible is the DNA to Jesus Christ. It's the word. It's his words. When you read it, it's his voice. And maybe some of you here right now are saying, Ryan, I've never heard his voice. Read the Bible out loud. And you heard his voice. (laughs) So you got to read it. And then you're praying that you talk into him. And then in obedience, read, pray, and obey is how it works. Why? Because God is all-knowing and he loves you and he wants to help you, believe it or not. You know that that saying, God, you see these pastors on like TBN and these guys begging for money. God will bless you. Give us all your money. God will bless you. It sounds cliche, but mind us all that money, stupid stuff. Listen, God does want to bless you. Believe it or not, he does want to bless you. He wants to help you. You know why? Because he loves you. He loves you so much. And some people just can't understand that. They're so caught in religion and just reading and praying and doing their their religious stuff. God loves you and he wants to help you. Trust me, but it comes through a relationship with him, reading, praying, and obeying. See, I'm already crying. This stinks. All right, here we go. He will lead you by his Holy Spirit. If you, if you let him. Another word for the Holy Spirit in the Bible is called the Paracletus. It means to come alongside. We know that when Jesus got baptized by John the Baptist, it says the sky split and the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus in bodily form, but like a dove came down. So think about this. The person of the Holy Spirit is inside of you. So when you go out and you, if you're trying to like get a little sketchy and like, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a backslide for a minute. You know what I'm saying? I'll repent, come back to church on Sunday, going to Vegas for the weekend, bachelor party. Um, you know what I'm saying? So the Holy Spirit is in you. He never leaves you. He is the helper. He comes alongside to help us and he speaks to us and he gives us stop signs in our life when we're doing stuff that we're not supposed to do. He loves to give us stop signs, and a lot lot of us like to run stop signs. And remember, even if you do a rolling stop, you're still blowing the stop sign. Okay? The Holy Spirit speaks to me like when I was a kid, and I'd play red light, green light. Now, the Holy Spirit is in us, and he likes to give us red light, green light, and then yellow light. So if there's a situation, God, I'm praying, will you please help me? I'm trying to, you know, praying about going to this job interview. He starts opening doors. He's like, green light, go. So I start going. Or if he wants to start closing the door, he'll, be, he'll give me a red light. Or if I'm in a situation that's not adding up and not feeling good, I start getting yellow lights. So Jesus, the Holy Spirit in us, God's Spirit in us, is constantly playing red light, green light with us. But we have to pick up the signals and we have to obey as we read and pray and obey, we'll learn how to stop 
and to go. We can't just be breaking the law and running red lights. You know what I mean? So when you take heed to the Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit is in you. He's with you. His Holy Spirit power will come upon you and he will lead you through the Holy Spirit life. But it comes through these guidelines, through the scriptures that he gives us. He speaks to us. And the only way the Holy Spirit can speak to us also is through scripture. But how can he pull scripture if you haven't read it? It's like shooting a gun and going in with an empty magazine. You're not going to shoot anything. There's roughly 23 to 24,000 verses in the Bible. Think about every verse like a bullet. As you read it, you're loading your magazine and the Holy Spirit's the gunpowder and it starts pulling from the chamber and you are able to shoot off those verses and he's able to feed those verses to your mind. But you have to read the Bible and you have to load your magazine. You have to load your spirit with the word of God. And that's how it works. And that's how he speaks to us through stopping, going, and he speaks to us through the word of God, but he can't speak to you through the word of God unless you have it inside of you. So speaking of the Holy Spirit coming alongside and helping, I've been married now for nine years. This is my wife. We just had our anniversary by God's grace. But I do, I do want to give you guys a, a story how this happened, how I met her through the helper of the Holy Spirit. I was single and ready to mingle for about five years of my life after I gave my life to God. God had to work through me and clean me up a lot before I could meet her. But I remember I met this girl at church and she looked good on paper. You know, she, you know, she was in church, the worship's playing, she's crying during the messages. I'm like, God's working in her life. And she's totally my type, you know, Burnett, the whole thing. And, you know, I'm like, she looks perfect, God. Thank you for blessing me, Lord. And I'm praying about her, but I, I didn't have, I wasn't getting green lights. I kept getting these yellow lights. And I was just kind of like, like, caution, caution. Something didn't feel right. So one day I decide, I'm like, God, I'm like, that's it. If, if she's not for me, God, take her out of my life. Just rip her out of my life, but don't take her. You know what I'm talking about? God, I surrender you. I'm in your will. You take her. Just take her. But please don't take her. Please. She's so amazing looking. But I was like, fine. So I got on my knees. And I remember being in my house and I prayed and I said, God, I said, seriously, I'm done. Because I'm, I'm stuck in like yellow light land. You know what I mean? Like caution, caution, caution. I'm like, I'm not getting the green light. So Lord, if this is not for you, get her out of my life. So I prayed and I said, literally rip her out of my life. And I was going to a concert with her that night with a couple of friends from the church. And we went to see this band. And right when we go in uh, to the concert, they, they, her and her friend disappear. I'm like, where'd they go? They come back. It smells like you know, like, like, like weed, like just tons of weed. I'm like, what the heck is going on here? These girls, you know, uh, is that them? Then they disappear again. Then they come back and it just reeks like alcohol. So they were sneaking away, getting drunk and high. And then I'm like, okay, God, like you gave me my, like you showed me now what was wrong with this girl. She was just basically posing to be something. I believe God was doing something in her life, but he, she literally was like, you don't want me? And I'm like, no, I don't want you. I don't want nothing to do with you like that. I go, I'm, I'm, I want a Jesus girl. I'm a Christian now. I don't, I'm not doing all this other stuff. So God took her out of my life. And then I'm like, great. Now I'm single and ready to mingle again. <laughs> like I thought I was about to close the deal. And then all of a sudden now I'm like, okay, God, here I am. Single Christian, lonely, single Christian again, Christian dating. This is lame. If you guys know what I'm talking about too, <laughs> this stinks. All my friends are married. They all have their girls and whatever. And now I'm here. I am just serving you, Lord. <laughs> you know, I was mad, but you know what happened? I waited and God ended up bringing me this girl, Crystal, Crystal Reese, which is way out of this park. I mean, just literally a 10, just a, just amazing. But God brought her to me in his timing and it took time because God had to reach her and get her ready, prepared to meet me. So God's always working. He's the divine chess player. Remember that. And he's moving things around, getting things ready. And in the right time, he brings us together. But imagine if I would have ran the stop sign and said, forget you, Holy Spirit. This is the one. She looks good on paper. I'd have been divorced already. Because that chick, when she, she went crazy. So anyway, <laughs> true story. But that's another story. So let's listen to the Holy Spirit, pick up the signals, and pay attention to the red light, green light, and he will lead you by his Holy Spirit. So never forget that God is all-knowing. He always has your back, and he loves you, and he wants 
to help you. And if you're here and you're single and you're ready to mingle, I wrote a rhyme for you. Get the wrong wife, ruin your life. Get the wrong man, ruin God's plan. And it flips. You can use it both ways. But here's some verses that encourage you. Second Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord search through the earth to strengthen whose hearts that are fully committed. So we know that we're a speck on a speck. So God's eyes are looking through the whole earth like this. Just, it's just the earth is nothing, just this little speck to him. And he's looking for whoever's hearts that are fully committed. Well, what's fully committed? Jesus says, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. I remember someone on Instagram hit me up and goes, well, what, what, what commandments is he talking about? Well, let's just talk about the most important commandment that Jesus says. He said to love the Lord God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the cross. Love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So the eyes of the Lord are searching through the whole entire earth to strengthen whose hearts that are fully committed. And as you read, pray, and obey, God will speak to you. Isaiah 41.10 says, don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious hand. Philippians 1.6 says, be confident in this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on until police, uh, completion, until the day of Christ's return. Now, I've done a lot of ministry in third world countries, Mexico, Central America, South America. I was just in the Philippines. And what's interesting that always blows my mind is when you go to Mexico, for instance, when you go to these areas that the cartels are in, these hotels go up like overnight, huge hotels. But then in these other areas, these guys start construction and they're still building this hotel and they lay the foundation, they got the rebarb, they do a floor to you, and then they're just gone for years. Jesus Christ is not a third world construction worker. He's going to get the job done. Whatever he started in you, he's going to finish it until Christ's return. Don't think he left you. You might be here right now, and you might be going through a hard thing. We go through hard seasons. We go, I've, I've been going through a really hard season lately. We go through stuff, but remember, God is for us. He is with us. He is not going to leave you half under construction. He's going to complete what he started. And he's always working, even though when you don't see him working, he is always working because he is the divine chess player. And he's outside of time and space. He's in the past, the present, in the future. And he knows what's best. And just like my kids, I don't give them, I have triplet daughters and a son, I don't give them candy every day, even though they want candy every day. Why? Because it will destroy their life. God's not going to give you something that's going to destroy your life. Patience is the key. I hate patience. <laughs> I got to preach that to you, though. I hate patience. I'm impatient. But patience is the key if you want God's best. Now we're going to look at verse 20, back to the dinner table with Jesus and the disciples. Jesus said this, I tell you the truth. Hold on. I tell you the truth, anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me, and anyone who is welcoming me is welcoming the Father who sent me. So Jesus is now telling the disciples, whoever welcomes them as ambassadors and a witness of the gospel message is welcoming him and God the Father in heaven. Like the disciples, we have all been commissioned by Jesus to be messengers and bear witness to the truth. Jesus gave the disciples and us believers the Great Commission. One of them is M Matthew 28. He says, go out and preach the gospel, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey my commandments. What is that? Read, pray, and obey. So now let's talk about being a witness for Jesus and the gospel message. Acts 1.8, Jesus says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will, underline that, be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere, in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and all the way to the ends of their earth, earth in Virginia, where we're at now. But how do we receive the Holy Spirit so we can have the power and be his witness? John chapter 13, verses 16 to 21, Jesus said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God sent his Son into the world not to judge, not to judge the world, 
but to save the world through him. He didn't come to judge or condemn us. He loves you. Like I said, God sent his son on a rescue mission out of eternity to die for the sins of the world. Going on in verse 18, it says, Jesus said, there's no judgment against anyone who believes in him, but anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. And judgment is based on the fact that God's light, which is Jesus, came into the world, but people love the darkness more than the light for their actions were evil. Trust me, when I wasn't a Christian, my actions were evil. I was telling your pastor, I was dating a girl that was into a cult, witchcraft. She was into witchcraft. Like, demons and stuff were like manifesting in my house. I was so deceived and so jacked, I was in the bar process of getting a, a pentagram tattooed on me. And on this other one, I was getting self-destruction. I was gone. You can't even imagine how gone I was. But then I gave my life to Christ, and it just, like that, everything changed in a moment. Verse 20, Jesus goes on to say, All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it, for their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light, so others can see that they are doing what God wants. So all we have to do is repent of our sins. Repent. I used to hate the sound of that word. You know what repent is? The Bible says the wages of sin lead to death. So that's like if I'm driving my car and I'm about to go off the cliff, what do I do? Well, instead of dying, I just flip a U-turn. So what is repent? Flip a U-E. So change the direction in which you are going. However you're living, if it's not for Christ and Christ is not first, repent. Flip a U-turn and head to God and he's there. You can come boldly to the throne of grace. Boldly through the throne of grace as Jesus Christ is interceding for us. You could come and you could receive the forgiveness of sins and everything that God has for you. And he will give you the power from heaven, the Holy Spirit, so you can live that life that you were created for. And that is by faith. You believe and you receive the Holy Spirit. And then you will have the power of the Holy Spirit to be his witness. John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the God, Father God except through me. Jesus is the only way. It's very narrow. John 7, 13 to 14, Jesus says, you, you can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gates are wide and many choose that way. Underline that. People choose to go there. You're not destined for there, but you choose to go there. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is very difficult and few, only few ever find it. Why? Because people don't want to deny themselves of their body appetites, pick up their cross and follow Jesus. They would rather just live for themselves. You literally don't have to do anything with God. Just don't do anything and just be you. Live your life for whatever you want. And that's the highway to hell. It's like getting a Tesla and just put on autopilot and driving to Vegas. You don't do anything. You just go. Now, but the road to life is very difficult and it's very narrow because Jesus is the only way. Matthew 10, verse 32 to 33, Jesus said again, anyone that acknowledges me publicly here on earth, I will acknowledge them before the Father in heaven. But anyone who denies me here on earth, I will also deny them before the Father in heaven. So when people reject the message we share of Jesus Christ, they're actually rejecting God in heaven. Now let's see what the Bible says about how people will receive this gospel message that I'm giving to you right now when we share it. 2 Corinthians 2 verses 14 to 17 says this, but thank God he has made us his captives and continues to lead us along in Christ's triumphal procession. Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. Our lives are a Christ-like fragrance rising up to God, but this fragrance is perceived differently by those who are being saved and by those who are perishing. To those who are perishing, we are a dreadful smell of death and doom. But to those who are being saved, we are a life-giving perfume. And who is adequate for such a task? As this, you see, we are not like the many hucksters who preach for personal profit. We preach the word of God with sincerity and with Christ's authority, knowing that God is watching us or that the all-knowing God is watching us. We, we're, we're preaching grace and truth. We're like Calvary Chapel people. 
So we believe in grace and truth. I'm going to tell you about heaven. I'm going to tell you about hell. I'm going to tell you about sin. And I'm going to tell you about forgiveness. I'm going to talk about your life being destroyed. And I'm going to talk to you about the power and the work of the Holy Ghost in your life. That is the beauty of the raw gospel of Jesus Christ. We are not like the hucksters telling you, give you all your money or do this and that. And, and, and your life is going to be perfect and this and that. That's not true. You're going to have pain. You're going to have sorrow, but you will have peace in Christ. That's the bottom line. It's not through your faith. So to all those that are slaves to sin, living in darkness, consuming evil with their eyes, their ears, and living after their body appetites, filling their minds, their body and soul with filth and deception from the culture and Satan's agenda in the mainstream. We just saw the music awards or whatever it was called, right? With that one guy with the, the devil doing the ritual and all that stuff. Let me tell you something. We're going to close here in a minute. Look, at, I work with some of the biggest bands on the planet. I go on tours with some of the biggest rock bands, metal bands, the, the big, biggest raves. My friend manages Justin Bieber. I'm in, the, I'm, in this, I'm, in, I'm in Hollywood scene. Let me tell you something. What you see on TV, that's witchcraft. There, it, it's not fake, it's real. I can tell you stories and stories. I'll just give you one story and I'll put Madonna on blast. Um, so she has Maverick Records. Which whereas Maverick Records and a booking and now it's a booking agency. I don't know if they're still in, 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 in business with the records, but they're, they're they're the management. My friend used to manage this huge pop band, I'll leave their name out of the story. But they were all getting new record deals. And they ended up in the office of Maverick Records and there was a they laid this girl on the table and started putting stones over and doing witchcraft over her. And then they realized he was in the office, so they kicked him out because he was a Christian. Another girl went down to Miami to get Censoria done with her. They called it body cleanse. She got a huge record deal. So let me tell you something. What you guys are seeing on the, on, on the Grammys and the, the music awards and all this stuff, Megan, Megan Fox and, and Machine Gun Kelly cutting themselves drinking blood. It's in the news. Google it. Nicki Minaj talking about that little demon that's inside of her that makes her do bad things. Guys, it is real. It is real. You have to get in my radio show if you want to hear more. But, you know, that's my plug. No. Um, no, but, hey, I'm just joking about that. But listen, it's real. It's real and it's invading our minds and our souls. Garbage in, garbage out. Let's go back to the mental health crisis. What are we watching? I never point fingers. What the kids and people and us, who, us as a body, what are we watching? Garbage in, garbage out. Why do we have so much anxiety? Why are we stressed out? Why am I feeling these emotions? Why am I feeling these feelings? What are we programming our mind with? When you're listening to these art, some of these artists' music, you know the filth. It's, you, dude, garbage in, garbage out. I'll just leave it at that. So they're filling their minds and body with souls with filth, deception from the culture and Satan's agenda in the mainstream. You see that new Target thing, right? Satan loves your pronouns, you see that? Well, there goes Target. Disney, Netflix, Target, you know, I'm just, Cutting them off, one by one. Those people can't stand to be around us. They're like vampires when they're exposed to lights. But to those who are being saved, the Bible says we are a life-giving perfume. For those who are looking to discover a relationship with Jesus, the one true God, and want to be set free and fill that empty void in their heart that they've been trying to fill with relationships, wealth, sex, alcohol, drugs, and other forms of spirituality like new age and the occult and dead religion with no power. If you go on Amazon and you Google uh, the spirit board, it's called the Holy Spirit board. I don't know if you guys have seen it. It's basically, it has, it's called the Holy Spirit board. It says contact Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And when you look at it, it's done by Satanists because when you look at it, it looks just like a Ouija board. And the, whole, the, the, God, the Godhead that's on it has the Baphomet, the Church of Satan Baphomet hand signals. You know, the half man, half goat. These are the hand signals up and down. So he's on there like that. It's the Ouija board. And it says you could contact Jesus. And in the pictures <laughs> on Amazon, they're in like a seance. And they're doing like the whole like triangle, Illuminati, like all that stuff in the pictures. Oh, 
you might contact a Jesus figure, but it'll be a demon called Jesus. Do not mess with that. The only way you can have a relationship with God is through holiness. Holiness. Holiness is the power of God. And if you want to fill that empty void in your life, we were created to be filled with God's spirit. Nothing else is going to fill that empty void. No success, making tons of money. My, my friend's the owner of In-N-Out Burger, okay, Lindsay Snyder. She's, she's a billionaire, right? You could hear her. She has an I'm second out as well. She dropped it. It doesn't matter how much money, what you have in the world, nothing will ever fill that empty void. She's been through like three marriages, I think. It's in her story. Trying to fill a relationship because she had a fatherless dad, her dad died. Trying to fill it through relationship, through buying items, things and all this stuff. Nothing filled that empty void in her life until she truly surrendered and gave her life to Christ. No wealth, no money, no relationship, no drugs, no alcohol, no relationship with your screens, through pornography. Nothing will fill that empty void. All that will happen, it's like a black hole. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger and wanting more and more. And you'll fill, you'll, you'll be mentally, you'll be in a mental health crisis. And I'll end it with John chapter 18, verse 12. Jesus said this, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. So I have a question for you. How do I smell like death and doom or like a life giving perfume? And that will separate where we're at today. Jesus said this in verse 20, I tell you the truth, anyone who welcomes my messenger is welcoming me, and anyone who is welcoming me is welcoming the Father who sent me. So the question is, you've heard the raw gospel of Jesus Christ today. Raw. Heaven, hell, forgiveness, God's love. He's all-knowing. He has a plan for you. He's the creator of all things. He knit you together in your mother's room. He designed you with a specific plan and purpose while you're here on planet Earth. But Satan is a fisherman, and he has a big tackle box, and he has all these different lures and baits for different kind of fishing. And what he wants to do is he wants to cast these out in front of us, these shiny objects, and he wants to hook us. And what he wants to do is he wants to entangle us in the fishing string. And the fishing string is the addictions, it's strongholds, it's footholds. And if by God's grace, we can break free of these strongholds, we can get away. But Satan's not interested in catch and release. He wants to reel you in, he wants to gut you, and he wants to make some fish tacos. Because he's come to steal, kill, and destroy. It says, stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil. He roams around the world like a roaring lion, looking to whom he can devour. He wants to reel you in, and he wants to devour you because he hates your guts. He hates you, and he wants to kill you. But Jesus says, but I've come to give life abundantly. He's come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus says, but I've come to give life abundantly. And there's some people here today. Wherever you're at, and trust me, I'm a man, I got wife, I got kids, I, I run a, a business, I do ministry as well, I do a lot of different things, and I've seen it a lot, and I've been through a lot, and Satan has some strongholds on some people, footholds, and he's holding you back, he wants to get you off course, if you wouldn't you hook a fish, you know what I mean, like, he, he, even if he, he, he breaks away and gets off the line, you, you still got him and you're taking him off course from the direction in which he was going. If Satan can just get you off the course from your destiny, he's cool with that. But he really wants to reel you in and he wants to get you entangled so you can become a slave to sin and you can't do nothing because of all these shiny objects that you bit. Money, success, fame, girls, relationships, wealth, all these different things. That's how he gets us. And unfortunately, we're like dumb fish. I'm guilty. I'm a shiny object guy. I get it. But... This is why we have the person of the Holy Spirit in us. He's with us. The Holy Spirit power will come upon us and he'll play red light, green light with us. And we can operate like an antenna and pick up the signals to the most high God. It's almost like a Wi-Fi connection, the most hi-fi. But Satan, Lucifer, is the father of lies and he likes to connect us to the li-fi. So these two forces are fighting against each other. This is why as we read, pray, and obey, we can be plugged into the power from heaven and get the most hi-fi and be led by the Holy Spirit as he can work in us and through us. And that 
is a spirit-led life with the all-knowing God. If you're here and you want to give your life to Jesus Christ for the first time, if you want to give your life back to the Lord because you've been on a detour route, everyone hates detour routes. You know, getting stuck on a detour route when you're going home, you're like, that's the next X, and now I'm getting 20 minutes out of the way and I got a flat tire. That's a true story in Palm Springs a couple weeks ago. But you've been on a detour out in your Christian walk, like the Israelites, stuck in the desert for 40 years. It was an 11-day journey. God has a plan for you. He loves you to death, to the death of the cross. He wants to forgive you. He wants to fill you. And he wants to use your life. If you're here, or maybe you're having problems with strongholds and footholds, Or maybe you're here and you're like, Ryan, I just need prayer. I need you to pray over me that I get filled with the Spirit. I'm going to pray for people that need to give their life to the Lord, give their life back to the Lord. Or maybe you just need a fresh feeling of the Holy Spirit or you need prayer for stuff that's going on in your life. Stick your thumb up and I'm going to pray because my time is up. I see you guys back here, here, here. All right. There's a lot of you guys. That's what's up. I'm going to pray for you guys. Let's all say this prayer out loud. Say, Jesus. Forgive us of our sins. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. We surrender our life to you tonight. No more games. Flood me with the power from heaven and cover me with the blood that was shed on the cross. In Jesus' name. And I want to pray over everyone here. Father God in heaven, I pray in Jesus' name that you will split the sky. And that you will pour out your Holy Spirit and that you'll baptize people with the fire and the power of your Holy Spirit. I pray that you will break all strongholds, all footholds in Jesus' name. I pray for addictions, that you will break them off of them, Lord. I pray for marriages, that you will bring them together, bring unity. I pray for the mental health crisis, people here that are struggling. God, invade their life. Bring heaven to earth. Invade their life. Make them new. Hard hearts, make them soft. Lord, their minds that they're struggling with, heal their minds. Lord, give them your thoughts, your mind, your heart. We thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for what you've done here today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you very much.